we will recite together Psalms 100. And it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth unto all generations. For our formation of our faith, we will read together Exodus 20, 8 through 11, and John 3, 16 and 17. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservants, nor thy maidservants, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all the in the mills, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Our scripture lesson for today is coming from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. We will read responsibly, please. Let us all stand. I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with myrrh. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and, be, and behold, this also is vanity. I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainted mine heart with wisdom, to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the son of men, which they should do under, under the heavens all the days of their life. I made me gardens and orchards and planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I got me servants and maidens. I had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. So I was great and increased, more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. There was no profit under the sun. Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly, as far as light excelleth darkness. Altogether, then said I in mine heart, 
as it happened to the food, so it happened even to me. And why was I then more wise? And this also is vanity. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and application of his words. You may be seated. been battered but the hunger still goes from I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior this ship has been battered but thanks be to God this anchor still holds the ship we had nothing to fear except we forget the leading of the Holy Spirit and so as we come before the throne of grace this morning, let us tell everything to the Lord. He wants to hear from us. And as we come, there are so many brokenness among us. So many heartbreaks. So many trials so many dissatisfaction so many things going among us as God's people but he knows all about them and he wants to take charge of our hearts and our minds this morning and so we come in the presence of the Lord let us not allow the enemy to stand in the way between us and our Savior. Let us not allow the distraction of the world to carry us down in destruction Broadway. Even though we are hurting, we are tired of this old-fashioned way of living. We want to surrender all to Jesus this morning. But we only can do it, do it by having faith in Jesus Christ. It's faith that allows us to be healed from the sin-sick souls. It's faith that brings hope. The man with his servant that was sick he needed his servant to be healed. And he knows that only Jesus could heal. And the servant said, Master, my house is not worthy for you to enter in. Just speak the word. And my servant will heal. It was faith in the master. It was fate with the man with the withered hand that Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. It was fate that he said, take up thy bed and walk. At the gate beautiful, that man sits there waiting for the water to be troubled. At the pool, sorry, waiting for the water to be troubled. No one was there to put him into that water but the great healer came along he 
it was not the water that the healing was in. It was in Jesus Christ. Naaman has to dip seven times, but it was faith that made him whole. This morning, I can tell you that Jesus can make you whole. He can put those broken pieces together and mend them as if they had not been broken. My sister here, she has been troubling going through with hypertension. She sits here. I would ask her to come here. And Brother Damien's mother, if they could reach up here this morning. And the leader elders. And those who desire that the Lord can do something for them. It's not about me. You can sit, my sister. That is one going to pray but is the prayer answering God that is going to answer our prayer our feeble prayer he is the one that going to touch down from heaven hope in his hands and touch you it's not about me it's about Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord the ship has been battered but the hunker still holds because Jesus holds the hunger for us. And so this morning we are going to kneel around these sisters. And for those who need Jesus in their lives and know that he can do something for them, we are going to kneel and petition the throne of grace. Holy, holy, holy is thy name. Thou art worthy. God, you are worthy to be praised. From the uprising of the sun to the going down, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we come before you this morning. We are unworthy. We are undone. We are beaten by the hands of the enemy. But praise be to God this morning. Your children see it fit to come before the throne of grace. To call upon your holy name. We thank you Lord for your house where your honor dwells. We thank you for the invitation that you have given to your children. To come into your house to worship and to praise your high and holy name. This morning, O oh God, we are being beaten by the hands of the enemy. But praise God, you said, bring all your cares before me because I care for you. We thank you to know as a people, Lord, you see us. You know us. You know where we dwell. You know everything about us more than even we do know ourselves. So God, we come in no other name but in the name of Jesus our Savior and Lord, the great healer, the great physician, the sympathizing Jesus, the one who have never lost a case. Lord, that we bring our crooked self to you this morning. We are weary of hurt. We are laden with sin this morning, but we look to heaven and we long to enter in. Lord, these two sisters, one that is struggling with hypertension. Lord, you said you wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health. But the enemy doesn't want us to prosper. At times he throws darts on us, Lord, that we feel that there is no hope. But thanks be to God, there is hope in you, Lord. Because when we hope in your word, there is hope. There is peace, there is satisfaction, there is joy, Lord. And so we bring her to you now at the foot of the cross. And I know, Lord, that you look beyond her fault and you saw her needs this morning. Great God of the universe, we know, Lord, that you want us to talk to you and tell us you, our problems and our trials. And so we ask you, Lord, to touch down from your throne room now, Lord. 
And not only the body, but the soul, the heart, and the mind this morning. Lord, as she reach up to you. We pray for her, Lord. We pray that you will cover her this morning under your blood that is still available. That is still flowing from the throne. We beg you this morning to anoint her with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, Brother Damien's mother, she's suffering with that pain. With her feet, Lord. I know sometimes, dear God, she wants to go, she wants to move, but she cannot move because of that pain. But God, there's no pain that we feel that you know about. No pain that we feel that you never feel for us, Lord. That's why you went on Calvary to die for us. And so, God, I beg you this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, touch her from the crown of her head to the sword of her feet. Anoint her with the anointing of the Holy Spirit this morning. Touch her mind also that she will believe in you. She will have faith in you, trusting you, Lord. That one day, if it's not now, Lord, when you return, she will walk as never before. All of us gathered here today, Lord, we need that healing too. Sometimes our mind drifts because the enemy want to keep us down. But because we behold Jesus, our Savior, he cannot keep us down. Because we look to you who is the heart and finish of our faith. Lord, remember our young people this morning. Especially those who just surrender their lives to God. Lord, I commit them into your care. I commit them in your hand this morning. And I pray, Lord, I know you already prayed for them. You prayed for all of us. That's why we are here this morning. And that's why the enemy targets us so much. Because he knows that your hand is upon us. Consecrate our hearts and our lives, we pray today. Deliver us from all evil, Lord, for thine is a kingdom. Have your own way with your people, Lord. We pray this morning for those who see fit not to enter into your courts today, but we pray them up. Those who are in the valley of decision, those who have made their decision to follow you, but the enemy stand in the way, we beg you to loose that chain, Lord. Burst that chain and set the captives free this morning. Many of us are bound down in sin, oh God. But we beg you to loose us, Lord, from the burden of sin. We beg you this morning to hold us and wrap us in the hollow palm of your hand. Oh, Jesus, we know you are God. And we know that you can do it for us. And so we believe in you. We have that faith. We hope in you. We trust in you, Lord. Many are bound down this morning because of discouragement. Many are bound down this morning because of Carrigo Brinkum. Lord among us, deceitfulness and godliness and holiness among your people. We need to relieve from that burden of sin this morning. God, take charge of business now, we pray. We pray for the one who are going to break the bread of life. We ask you to break him now, Lord. Make him a new Lord. Fashion him that the words he gave today will not his word, but your word. And we will leave here rejoicing giving thanks always in your name. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for the hours that we have been spending with you from morning till now. And we thank you for the blessing of the Sabbath. We pray in Jesus' name.
AC blowing right in my head is getting the, the better of me. But anyway, I will survive. I, I don't know, I mean, for most of us who stand to preach, all the Lord work in our life when it comes to preaching or speaking from here. But anytime I, 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 anytime I, I have a sermon and decide to speak a sermon, immediately after that, the, 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 the Lord lay one on my heart. And this one that was laid on my heart for quite some time now, of all my life, this has been the, 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 the most struggling one so far. And the, the, reason, the reason, as I came in this morning, I looked down the aisles, I started to see that I mean, they're mostly women. Uh, and this is what a sad part for the church, most women. And this one going to seem more personal. Women, it's going to seem like I'm knocking you. It's going to seem so. But let me, let me, let me, let me, let me straightforward the setting. When Sister Mac called me this week, I had no intention of being here today. But the message that I already laid on my heart, I tried to change it. When Sister Mac called me, I was actually laying on my, I was tired, was resting actually. I was resting, I actually tried to change it. But because I'm, my entire being was just uh, over, uh, already been overwhelmed by, by this, I could not change it. Because number one, my, my family was supposed to be here when this sermon was preached. We already go through that already. In time this is going to be preached, you got to be here. They might be here still. But they, they, I mean, Sally Rock today got a homecoming day, that's why. So, so I could not be knocking any woman personally. And this is the reason why the struggle for this one was so hard. Because it's going to seem like I'm knocking you women. Remember, I got wife and I got daughters, and the same issue is with them. So no way I could be knocking you all. If you feel personal, it's not personal. It is not personal. So I, I entreat you. I entreat you. Buckle down hard. Tighten that seatbelt. Because Brother Walker is not going down a easy road. I struggle hard, I pray hard that God, if, if this is going to hurt somebody's feeling, stop me. Because there's no intention. But, but we are people journeying, right? And it should got to be spilled out. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. I mean, when, when I when I, when I, when Mark, Monica and I got married, a cousin of mine came to visit us on the Sunday morning. And he suddenly looked at Monica and he says, you is in the eyes of the old. He was, he was, he was saying that, brother, what, I mean, my cousin, you, you, you behold pretty good. And why he was saying. So Monica said, I heard him, I said, what did you just say? Beauty is in the eyes of the old. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Let us pray. Father God, we come before your holy presence this morning, knowing that you are the only true one living God. Father God, uh, you have impressed my heart with this message for over some time now. And today I stand before your people. No intention in my heart, God, to, 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 to hurt anybody feeling or to knock anybody. But I ask you that let you be seen. Let you be seen and I be left behind. And at the end, your name be lifted up. Your name be praised. Because I ask this in just name, I pray. Amen. As Seventh day Adventists, they are asking for teaching that, that we, 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 we teach in our church that is not directly and straightforwardly forwardly spelled out in the Bible. What are you talking about, Brother Walker? For instance, let's look at something like the millennium. The word millennium is not in the Bible. But we, we know that based on when, when, Christ, when, Christ, when Christ come back to earth and, 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 and when Christ come back, uh, go back to heaven, bring back the same servant with him, and when he come back again for the final, we know that that's a thousand years, right? And we, and, 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 and we teach that as a millennium, right? But, but the word millennium is not in the Bible, right? Okay. Number two, the investigative, the, the investigative judgment. The word investigative judgment is not in the Bible, right? It's not there. 
But we understand that, 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 that after, after Christ was risen and he went back to heaven, he put on the priest's garment. They man preached last week about, about uh, Aaron put on, put on, the, put on the, 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 the breastplate of, of, of judgment. Of, of, of judgment. When Christ went back to heaven, he also, he also put on the breastplate of judgment. So the investigative judgment, we understand that, 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 that judgment begins in the house of God. And even now, you and I probably be, be, being judged, right? Yes. But the word is not in the Bible. But we teach this, right? Number two is, uh, guess what? Again, uh, abstain from flesh food. Uh, as a church, we teach that. And why do, why do we teach that? Now, no, I, I got I gotta striking evidence of this just a couple weeks ago. I went to this young man's house, and, 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 he, and he says that his daughter, which is three years old, her arm got swelling, and she was starting to... And he wondered why. And he took her to the doctor, three years old. Doctor says, you are feeding your kid too much chicken. So, so we understand, we understand here that, 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 that even though the Bible said after, 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 after the flood, we had God even get the command to heat meat. We understand as a people, as a church, in these days, meat is not good for us. So in, in, other, in other words, I understand here that we might have a better, more polished lifestyle where we, we, go to, we go to Walmart or we go to the Caribbean store and we, you know, we jump, or we jump in canoe, or, or, or we, or our lifestyle is. You know, you know, one thing when I was a little boy, I was the one that go to the market with my mother. So, so every, 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 every Saturday back then, we go to the market and we buy, we buy every, every, everything, everything, everything. So in that basket was, was a little of everything that come to the house. But in this, in this, in this hood, these people does not do that. So, so when they need something, they go to McDonald's. McDonald's. So, so every time that this little girl wants something to eat, they go to McDonald's to buy mac chicken. So that's why this little girl, at three years old, she was actually going boobs and, and her arm was smelling. So we understand here that, that as a church that, 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 that even though the Bible did God, God's after the flood that we can eat meat, we understand that meat is not good for our kids, especially our girl children. Not good for them. Next one, uh, LNG White Books. Now, you know, we are going to issue our church with reading LNG White Books. Uh, some say she's a prophet, some say she's not. That is not in my issue. My say is, is, is that many of what she has written, we have seen that what she has written, uh, it is coming to pass. So, so we stand here and we preach and we teach it based on evidence, not that it is directly in the Bible. I hope you're getting the drift of where I'm coming from. So there are many, many aspects of our, church, of our teaching. The Bible does not spell it out. But as a church, we teach it because we have seen the evidence of it. That's why we teach it. Now, we... This Christian lifestyle that, that we are all embarking on, we call it many, many different names. We call it uh, Christianity. We call it a journey because we are moving from one aspect of life to another. We're moving from the sinful, carnal, degraded lifestyle to a life of righteousness. So we call it, we call it a journey. We also have, we call it a, a, a movement, which, which when, 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 the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the, when the, when the pioneer, pioneers started this, they call it a movement, movement. We call it a train, uh, like a train moving from one city to another. So we call it a bus. We call it salvation, salvation from sin. And we also call, we also call, call it uh, uh, that what we, we are moving from, from, from this sinful kingdom into the righteous kingdom. We call it many, many different, different, different names. That's the reason why we are here today. The reason we, why we are here today is no other reason than, than, than we are learning the way of salvation. To move from one area to another, to start this journey, one step at a time, to face to to faith as we journey into that, like like the children of Israel journeying from Egypt into the Promised Land. That's where we are today. Let me tell you, this is not a Disney trip. This is not putting on our clothes small and we going down to Disney to enjoy Disney. This is not what it is. That's not what it is. This is not a a evening stroll or you know say, say come Monica let's just let's go down and have a nice dinner but 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 by 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 one of the nice that's not what it is it is it is 
not a fashion parade. Let me go back. It is not a fashion parade. Just while I was running my message over my, my mind, I look at my wife and my daughter and I got to shake my head. I got to shake my head. Because, because women, we, we are, we are, we are, we are being, we, we are, we are, I don't know what is wrong today that we, we think, you know, some years, some years ago I watched a thing on Good Morning America where they showed two women. I don't know if you see you know, you see. One was all nicely makeup and all that, and one nothing. And the question was asked, which one looks better? They said the one in the makeup looks better. But the one in the without makeup is more trustworthy. That was man. This is serious. Buckle up. Let me say that. As modern Christian people, and I'm not knocking you person. Can it, it take me? You hear me talk about 30 years of my life? It's 31 now. Because it's July. I make it 31. 31 years now. I'm not going to stop using this 30, 30 years. I'm not going to stop. Because what? 30 years I've been up in this church. Was just talking. And no heart in it. I've came to the point of my life that Christianity is not a talk. Right. It's not a play. Amen. It is salvation. Oh, yeah. it, 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 it is not taking sides. It, 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 it is not even come to church and Sabbath to preach. It is not even come to church Sabbath and take part in the program. It is not. I, I went home, vexed with my wife and come to church and preach next Sabbath. Vexed with my wife and come to preach next Sabbath. It's not it. It's time we get it. We, we, are, we are constantly going the wrong way as seven Adventists. Ah. Uh, you make some nice talk. Okay. The Spirit will lead you. The Spirit will guide you. And I'm, I'm starting to get... Nowadays we hear people talk about the Spirit, you know. I listen carefully when hear people talk about the Spirit. Because, it, because guess what? The Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit. It doesn't work as all we think it works. We are, we are, we are traveling our way. And not God's way. Our way seems more like the right way, yes. We are human beings, we got choice. But we are going the wrong way. Even though we say we are still Adventists. Listen to me, Regin. If going to church save us, all the Jews will be saved. They put Christ on the cross Friday evening. Go to, go to the church Sabbath. Come up, son of man, come tell lie. Say, this disciples take him, took him away. Coming to church does not save us. Amen. Let me say that again. Coming to church does not save us. Amen. We have not yet on the path to humbleness. Here we are, Adventists, and, and we, we are more quick to judge. We are more quick to destroy. We are more quick to go the wrong way than the right way. Even though we just said the very same thing in summer school and lesson study. Yes. By the time we go on to the door, the whole thing forgot. Yes. Listen to me. True. When you hear me talk, I'm tired of that personality. I didn't say you. I'm in my life, I'm tired of that hypo hypocrisy. I'm tired of that. If that's what it is, if that, if that what Christianity is to, is to me, it is nothing to me. If Christianity is hypocrisy, I prefer go to hell. I prefer go to hell. If that's what it is, if all my coming to church is, 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 is the heart of hypocrisy every day, I stay home, I go to the clubs, but enjoy all them things out in the world. And, and this is why I get my just cause to go to hell. To go to hell. We are not led by the Spirit. We talk about it. But we're not led by the Spirit. Listen to me. I've seen many aspects of the life, my life, when the Spirit beats me. 
and I go me and I go the other way. I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to talk about yourself. I talk about myself. The Spirit beats me and I go otherwise. And yes, when I turn around, I say, go back to, to, to the same God and beg him, for, beg, beg him pardon. And he showed me the right way before. Amen. And I've been on the hand, God, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And he has shown me the right way before. I didn't take the right way. And now when I find myself between a rock and a hard place, I'm going back to him, though, begging me. For, thank, thank him, thank him. Yeah. Yes. Now, Brother Walker, what are you talking about? Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Let's go to the scripture. Let's, let's hear from the wise man. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Let's go to the, listen to the wise man. Now, let me go. He said here, I want you to listen to his word point by point, point carefully. Here he says now, I said in my heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth, meaning happiness, pleasure. That's what he's talking about. Yes. Therefore, enjoy pleasure and be all. This is also vanity. Amen. When I became the youth leader in my church many, many years ago, that's actually, actually, actually 20 something years ago, I made a statement of what did it not resonate good. I said, Youth department, I'm not knocking you all. I said it better if we have left our pleasure. And yes, brother, what are you saying? Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on, there are young people and they need to have pleasure. Yes! But listen to me. How many times the very same pleasure we have end up bad? Remember, sometimes when we have no pleasure and something happens? I see, I, I, I see in fight in social. Fight! So what I'm saying? So point there, point there is that it's go, it's go. He said, he said, okay, there, therefore enjoy pleasure and behold. This is also vanity. And I, and I want you to wrap your mind around these two words today. Vanity and vexation. That's where we're going today. Yes. He's saying that pleasure is vanity. And we're going, we're going to learn the meaning of the word vanity. Okay, let's go on. I set up laughter. It is mad. And at birth, what doeth it? I saw in my heart to give myself unto wine. I, 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 he said, I struck me here, you know. The wise man struck me sometime. He saw him say, no. To give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom and to lay, and to lay old and folly till I, might see, till I might see what was that good for my sons of men. You understand him there, what he's saying? I said, I struggle to understand him there. I, are you saying that, you know, something, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go down to the club tonight, to the go-go club? Just to teach my son not to go to gold. Is that what he's saying? Is that what he's saying? I said, I got him wrong here. He's he saying, that I'm going to enjoy folly. Just to teach my people not to do folly. Is that what he's saying? Is that a struggle with me here? But let's go, let's, let's go on. Which they should do under heaven and all the days of, of their life. I made me great works. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards. I planted trees in them of all kinds. I made me pools of water to water there with the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold, gold and, and even though Solomon of all these things, they were still bringing it to him. Isn't that unfair? The Queen of Sheba, when she came from Africa, she bring him gold and all that. He already have it. And you can read the book of Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles, and you see some of the things that, that, that this man did. Now, what is the understanding here of what the wise man is saying to us? He's saying that, listen to me, listen to me. I've been there and I've done it all. So in, in Hawa, listen to me, brother. Uh, 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 listen. In, uh, in Hawa, what's my word? In our meager, in our meager little struggle, we 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 gotta fight for money to pay the bills. 
I, I, I was standing, I was, I was at Pantafoot the other day and, 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 and a lady was in, before me. And you know, sometimes these women, they are taking some time to pay the bills to, to, to add. And, and, and it's like, okay, sometimes you got to understand these women. Because what? They are taking out every little penny to buy what they know the kids need. Women, you're all great, you know. We, 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 we men, we, 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 we will get fed up. And, and, and we, we, you think I'm going to do that? Looking in my purse and, and hemping every corner to find out a penny? I ain't going to do all that. That's what she was doing. But my point is, 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 is that you, you all are different from us. I said, I lost my mind. Well, let's go on. So you, what he said is that women, I, I mean, uh, I said, I lost my, 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 train, my train, but let's go on. Okay, where are my notes? Yes, I, 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 was, I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. And whatever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I retail my heart from the joy, for my heart rejoicing in my labor. And this is my portion of all my, my labor. I'm back now. He said, What I'm trying to say is that look at this man of what he possessed. Compare it to what we are striving for day by day. Where we can't even find money to, to, to buy food. But this man said, All that was vanity and vexation of spirit. Really? You mean all I'm struggling for is vanity and vexation of spirit? What I work hard for, I build my house, and that is vanity and vex, 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 vexation of spirit? Let's go on from understanding. Now, where am I? Okay, let verse 11. He said, Then I look on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. Really? What is this man saying? He said, I, I work hard to build my house, and it is nothing. I work hard for, 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 for that penny in the, in the sun, brother Sippy. And when I don't, all what I strive for with that penny is, 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 is nothing. I turn myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly. For which can, which, which can the man do that commit after the king? Even that which had been already done. He said, I have done it all. So, so, so what, you can't do me. You can't do me. I saw that wisdom excellent folly as far as light excellent darkness. The wise man hides are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceive also that one event happened to them all. Then said I in my heart, as it happened to the fool, so it happened even to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this is also vanity. Even his wisdom is saying was vanity. Even, you mean even my wisdom? That's what the wise man is saying. I, I go to 16 also. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool. For ever seeing that which, which, which now is the days to come, all my all be forgotten. And now die the wise man as a fool. Therefore, I hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. What is the situation today? Now listen to me. Some years, uh, ten years ago when I was in Jamaica, I got a friend. And I look at my friend, and I'm, I'm, I'm older than him, and when I look at him, you know, his face, the, the, the wrinkles was deep. And I was like, I'm older than my friend. Why is his wrinkles so deep? But then the other day, I, 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 Time to understand that that's not was me. Then when I can say, Oh, yes, that is you. I'm not 20 anymore. I'm not 16 anymore. Ladies, you see, women, if you're 
if I can heal up like this with ease, and I can jump up like this with ease, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm happy. But the, these potholes here and these you know, we don't worry about them. I know you all worry about them, ladies. But you're not 20 anymore. You are not 20 anymore. You are not. Because, because, understand, understand our heads. Because when we, when we start to buy all these white man made things to put on ourselves, to look good, really? What are we teaching our young girls? That they are not beautiful. They are not beautiful. I grew up in a years where they, where they, where they that black is beautiful. In America, there's a $80 billion yearly in what they call a suntan lotion. What, the, what, 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 what $80 billion, that, that the, the, the white man is trying to have more sheen. And while the white man is trying to have more sheen, uh, look more like us, we are trying to look like them. Really? Abominable idolatry. Let me ask a question. Which one of us sitting here today have seen a ugly person before? I want to see a show of hands. You have seen an ugly person before? Show me. Him. Thank you, boy. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to go any further. Answer get a question immediately. That's the picture. Nobody is ugly. There's, there's not a ugly man in this world. Let me ask you a question. For those who call people ugly. Where were you when that, pro, that process of fertilization was taking place? Where were you when those two eggs met together and formed that one? And what they call it, I don't know about autonomy. I don't know about it. And they formed that nucleus, whatever it is, and, and, and then the child started to. Where were we when God knelt down and pushed Adam out of the dust of the earth? So, oh dear, one of us will look at and, and God, and God pre creation and call them ugly. You, you, you see the trend, what I'm trying to say today? Talk about your style for a minute. Let's talk about your style, ladies. I was, oh, 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 I wonder if it was this that day. When I hear style took eight hours? Eight hours? That, that's vanity and vexation of spirit. If you got to sit that, and somebody, somebody's little, little, little children that I've seen, we take so many hours for them to sit down. I bet they were sleeping while I hear what's been done. They can't sleep all that time. Virgin, the, the picture here is today. Listen, all this does make us beautiful. You are already beautiful. Uh, uh, in Indonesia, near in, in, in Indonesia, there are the highland, there is a highland called the Andaman Island. The Andaman Island. When you go home, Google, you'll see it. It's a group of black people that live there. Uh, they call them the, the, the Jawawa tribe or the lost tribe or the hidden tribe. The most blackest people on earth. But they are the most beautiful black I've ever seen. I wish I had that color. Do I used to the Jawa? They don't really wear clothes. That's why I don't ask them to, to show it, give, give me a part. They don't really wear clothes. I don't want it. They are black. But they are beautiful black. Black is beautiful. So listen to me. I would, I would even go to the text about, about in, in 2 Peter 3 4, when it says, Women, uh, uh, you must teach your, teach your uh, women must, 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 Teach you know, to dress and all that. I must, and, 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 and I'm just saying, and, and they are adorning. It, it should not be on the outside. So don't seek to adorn the outside and leave the inside. Amen. Remember, this is a Christian journey. Yes. The, 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 the outside is not important. I mean, the word vanity means meaningless. Yes. That's what the word vanity means. All this that we are striving for and we are working for, the wise man said it is meaningless. It makes no sense. It had nothing to our Christian growth or to our Christian lifestyle. It has, there's no use doing it. Yes. Nobody's ugly. Oh, we Jamaican people. <laughs> Nasty nigga, what this nigga, uh, the Jankro, and. Uh, 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 you know what I'm talking about? Oh, we class people and we class each other. It was when we are mad. Get over it! At times, we as Christian people understand this story and 
We can't be classing God. Can you listen to me? Can you make a nose? Can you make a, a lip? We you make a record people all say that name because how they, how they look, how they walk, how they shape. Eh? Really? The point here today is that we were in darkness. Now the light has come. Because we get, we, we mad and we hungry and we, we style people, we call some all kind of dirty name, all, all kind of name, we call people, listen to me. A time we have realized that, see, brother, is that every human being and God, is on the earth, is it, it, a spectacle, is it, it, somebody to God. Amen. Christ died for all. Amen. So, dear you and I, we're going to pass drastic remarks against God's creation. Let me try and wrap up now. Listen to me. Black is beautiful. Let me say it again. Black is beautiful. Let us all say it. Black is beautiful. We don't have to put on nothing to be beautiful. And teach our young kids that, especially our girls, that they don't need to put on nothing to be beautiful. They are already beautiful. God create them special. So listen to me. I, I got to put this in there. If we can pass drastic remarks and class one and that's black people. So the white man, the white man, I'm right in the call us monkey then. Is my point? That's what I'm saying? So we can't quarrel when the white man call me certain name and we call we same black people certain name. That doesn't make no sense. Does it make any sense? So when, it, when, it, when, it, when the white man call me monkey, we know we are not monkey. Because guess what? Christ is our beyond. Yes. And listen to me, women. So even when Tom not love you and Tom not married to you, you know that there's another man out there who's going to marry you. Because you are your own beyond. Yes, so you can't feel shame because the man, the man probably you, who you want to marry to, he didn't marry to you. Because what? We all are, we just remember saying that, if you want to take a bush, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, as I said, it's been very keenly here. In the Adventist church, they, they, they have this picture of a white man and say it is Jesus. But let me tell you something today. It's idolatry. Idolatry. Let me say that. But I walk away, you're saying. Even over Harmonac, we have no house without pictures of Jesus. Let me set up a use aspect of Jesus Christ's life. Set up a, you see what I'm saying? While he was on earth, he was divine as well as human. But the human side take on sin, right? So the human side was sinful. Christ didn't sin. Don't get me wrong. Christ didn't commit no sin. But the human side side take on sin. So when we, when we see, when we see, if, 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 we, if we could see Christ on earth as a man, we would see, we would see the sin we start having, taking on humanity. Yes. So what I'm saying is, 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 is that no way could we be worshiping that side of it. No way could we worship that side of it. So in other words, the so-called picture that we have in our host that, that we say is Jesus Christ, take it down. We have been brainwashed by the white man. Number one, Christ is not of color. He's not of color. And, and it, we can understand where he was born, his genealogy and all. We can understand. And, and still, based on his gene genealogy, the picture that, that, that they're showing is not of his genealogy. They're showing a blue-eyed white man and he's not a blue-eyed white man. He, he, he was born in Nazareth. Totally different picture. So that who they're saying, idolatry. Don't somebody fool you. It's an in the Adventist church and it's totally wrong. Let me wrap up. Okay. Vanity and vexation of spirit. The wise man is saying to us that all this that we're striving for is vanity. Let me go through a couple of things. A car is vanity. But not necessarily vexation of spirit. Because a car can take us many where we want to go. But it can become I want us to understand what the word vexation of spirit means. It's simply that we, we, we vex the spirit. We vex the spirit so that one day the spirit can leave us. A vexation of spirit. Look at a, a gun. A gun is, vexation, is vanity and also vexation of spirit. We, we, that, we are saying that the gun is a good thing. I defend you. No, 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 no. It is vexation of spirit. Uh, a, high, a, a, a high glass. This is vanity. 
but not necessarily because I, 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 I need it, right? I need it, need it. Uh, uh, Regin, very Regin. Vanity, but also vexation of spirit. It's a, well, 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 it's a good thing because I just travel through all this. The GPS is good. But listen to me. We have, we have replaced the consecrated and the consecrated for this. We have replaced these for this. I look around this morning. Most of us, no, no Bible, no hand. We have our, our phone. Brethren, the, the, the sermon preached last week that, 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 that Christ is the way to eternal life. His way was he's raised in his sanctuary. And we, 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 we have desecrated in Christ's sanctuary. Listen to me very good. Uh, that's, that's part of the sermon to come. To come. That this is the structure, right? Uh, usually, most churches are signed here, say, reverence my sanctuary, right? That's signed here. So, in other, in, other, in, other, in other words, we are taught that, that, that the body is a temple, right? Yes. Body is a temple, right? And, and how could we be marrying this temple? Oh, we, we treat this one nice. Probably we don't want to fit it over right now, right? One fit, one little good. But in the meantime, we destroy this one. We the tattoo it, we do all kinds of things to this one. But, but this one, we can't, we can't do it. We can't do it. You see, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see the conflict there? Doesn't make no sense. This is a temple. Temple. So what I'm trying to say is, is, is that a, a phone uh, 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 is vanity, but it can become vexation of spirit. We cannot, give, we cannot put, put on the, the, the consecrated. God, listen to me. This podium here is consecrated. Uh, all this, all this, all that, this show, the stone room, all this is consecrated. And we have showed show down, we have showed down the consecrated, the consecrated, this book, this book for the unconsecrated. Brethren, listen to me. We got to understand, as a people, where we're going. This is, this is God's church. And, and if, if we are doing these things now, can you imagine next 10, 20, 15 years, our children and grandchildren, they're going to desecrate it more than us. So we must be careful that we set a right trend today that they don't destroy our church anymore. Wrapping up. Okay. Glutton. Listen to me. I gotta put this one in there. I can't put it put my glutton. Now, food, the Bible says we 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 eat to live, right? But up, up to, food can become vanity and vexation as free. Because if we are glutton, it is. And the wise man Solomon said we, we can re read that thing in, 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 in Kings where all them with the hawks that used to kill in one day and sheep in one day. All parties have in one day. He said all that was vanity and vexation of, 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 of spirit. Of spirit. Uh, Bridget, what I'm trying to say to us today is listen to ourselves. Listen to ourselves, as Simon Bentley. Especially when we, when, when we know a Bible class or we study. We say it right. We say it right. We say all the right things. But does not do the right thing. It makes no sense to me. What I'm saying is, is that all that we are striving for, all that we work hard for. I was in Jamaica some years ago and I, and I drove behind a car, a very nice car. And the guy came out and he, he looked like he thought like this car. And my spirit grieved at me. And you know, sometimes I can understand sometimes why some bad men do some things. If I was, if I was bad that day, I would have dealt with him. It, it, it hung on my spirit because I drove, I drove, 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 I, I, I was in your car and you come to look at it if I hit your car. It hungers me that day. What I'm saying is that some of the very thing that, that we, we fight for, we make up us for, it is nothing in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. The wise man say, as country to the it is meaningless. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. Now, You know, I remember my cousin. You know, he got a hairstyle. And I say, why do you, you young men love to follow at each other's? Now he said, no, mine is original. The wise man says, there's nothing new under the sun. You know, if, if, if we then think, then okay, then all right. It's my money. Brother Walker, what are you saying? I work my money. It's my money. I work hard. So if I want to buy some makeup, it's not my money. If I want to pierce my ears, it's not my money. Anything I want to do is, is my money. Yes, I agree. It's your money. 
bear in mind, there are millions in this world today who doesn't have what you have. And we're studying our lesson this morning about Christ's missionary journey. And Christ's missionary journey is our missionary journey. But some of the time when we're wasting money to do some of these, 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 these meaningless things, why not send it to Africa? Why not send it to Haiti? Why not send it to Jamaica? Why waste money doing all these things when hard as I hope they will worse than us? We are striving, and I, I, would not, I, I don't want to miss this text. Uh, where the Bible says Christ was not, Christ was not, uh, it was, I think Isaiah 60, the Bible says he was not comely. Right? So, remember, Christ said that, listen, listen, listen to Christ here. He says, a thousand cattle on a hill is, belongs to him, right? But then the same Christ says, foxes have holes, ends have nests, birds have, have nests, but the son of man have no way to lay his head. You say another word. Even though he was the king of this world, he did not glory himself in the things of this world. We are not being called to glorify ourselves in the things of this world. We are Christian, we are striving, we are moving. So all these things make no sense to us as civil as Christians. You know, a couple of months ago, Monica and I was, was in the house, we were dressing. She was going to it. Well, and I'm going here. And she really, really looked good. And I said, Boy, well, it looked look good. And, and me and I walked because she trips to money. Sister Smith, I like, I, she had a dress that I like. Smith, uh, Wendell, come on, man. I don't know what you want to say. Sister Smith, what, what I'm trying to say is, is that dressing, we men are the beholder, ladies. We know we're just good, ladies. We know we're just good. We know. Well, listen to me. There was a time when women dressed to impress men and men dressed to impress women. Now you are, you, are, you are fighting a battle now because you're trying to outdress, outdress either each other's now. Lately, vanity and vexation of spirit. Ladies, married women, listen to me. Wrapping up. Listen to me. We men like to see you all in short dress, okay? Don't get me wrong. Or in the house. We like the short dress. We like to see it. So, so send, send them the picnic them, you know. Send them over grandma, send them, send them over, send them over there. And put on the short, the, the shortest, nicest dress. We love that. This, you know, this is another abomination I see, I see under the sun today. Women, listen to me. I'm not trying to be carnal. Listen to me good. I'm not trying to be carnal, don't get me wrong. As a man, we rejoice in the beauty of a woman's body. I see women tattooing their, tattooing their leg. It's the most nastiest thing I've ever seen in my life. So even you as women don't understand your femininity that God has given to you. Why are you destroying your, your, your beautiful leg with tattoo? It's the most ugliest and nastiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Right? Use that word. It is ugly and nasty. Women, your beauty is essential. Your body is essential to a man. God created that way. Why mess up with tattoo? It's ugly. That's what is ugly, brother, brother, brother Wallace. Those things are ugly, ugly stuff. So, the, so, so, Christ is our beholder. We are called to live a life of holiness and righteousness. We, we, we sometimes we must, uh, sometimes we must just, uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strange within, in the eyes of His glory and grace. Listen to me. You're all beautiful women. You're all beautiful. I can't, I can't tell no men that they're beautiful. No, I, I'm not that type of man. I, I, I tell you women, there's you're beautiful. Young women, you're beautiful. You all don't need no makeup. You don't need no hat on or put on to make, to, to, to make you beautiful. You're already beautiful. And black is beautiful. And no color. No, no, the man with this, with, with this softer color is better than you and more than you. You're already, because guess what? Jesus Christ is your beholder. God name be praised. Father God, we thank you for your mercies this day. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to just be here in, in the land of the living one more day. To be able, Lord, to hear and enjoy your words. For your word is truth. Father, your word is light. Your word is strength. Your word is our shelter, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to just be recipients of your mercy. 
Bless us now, Father, that the words we have heard, we will apply them to our lives. They will not just go over our heads and through our ears and be forgotten, Lord, but that they will become a part of our lives. We will understand the message that you sent to us today. We will hold on to that message, Father, and we will live that, that message. Bless us now as we depart to go our separate ways. Forgive us, us of all of our countless sins, and please save us when I shall appear. And bring us all back to AY this afternoon at 7 p.m. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated, everyone.